you cannot also import some of machines by designing machine on your own. You, if you do everything, it's not going to be efficient. Eventually, you're going to fail because your machine, the quality of the machine is so bad. Therefore, that makes your output, the quality is so, so low, make you uncompetitive. Uh, the unfortunate fact is that uh, almost without exception, every Latin American country has fallen into this so-called middle income trap. Means their income level per capita is reasonably high compared to poorer countries, but not high enough to call them high income country. But why the Latin American countries fall into that trap without being able to escape from that middle income trap? So I think uh, the most important reason is that they adopted this so-called ISI strategy. So ISI means import substitution industrialization. But their ISI is incorrect. Import substitution in general is a correct policy. But if you import substitute everything from top to bottom at the same time, you will fail because you will not be competitive with the uh, advanced nations. And you have to start with import substitution at the very bottom. So you import substitute the finished consumer goods. You don't import it. And you don't export just raw materials. You use raw materials to produce finished goods and export it. But the machinery used to produce that finished goods is imported. You cannot also import substitute machines by designing machines on your own. You, if you do everything, it's not going to be efficient. Eventually, you're going to fail because your machine, the, the quality of the machine is so bad. Therefore, that makes your output, the quality is so, so low, make you uncompetitive. You cannot do a comprehensive import substitution. You only do import substitution level by level, stage by stage. Then you gradually move up the ladder. Eventually, you import substitute machineries. And a lot of Americans, after the Second World War, they started this ambitious ISI strategy, and they failed. Eventually, they got into huge trouble, huge national debt. And uh, Precisely because of that trouble that gave them financial crisis, they switch, switch to another extreme by adopting the so-called Washington Consensus, going to the new liberalism. In that case, they completely open up their financial market, uh, completely have a free trade, and uh, exchange rate liberated, entire domestic market in liberated. That of course they were not able to compete with advanced nations nor with China. So eventually they fall into another, they fall into the middle income trap. That's why Professor Danny Roderick found that all the a lot of American countries after 1980 or 1990s have experienced the so-called deindustrialization, meaning after abandoning ISI strategy and switching to Washington consensus. So that's a, that's a turned out another mistake. So that's why they get stuck in the middle income trap. So now, because the income level and the development level of Latin American country is already at the middle income level, it's not as low as uh, African countries. They don't have to repeat the proto-industrializing process, but they have to do something else. I think that they have to look for the right uh, entry point for the second industrial revolution, for heavy industries or for high-tech industries. Somehow they have to design the correct industrial policy to support their entrepreneurs or their firms to produce high-tech goods and make that competitive in the global market. They cannot produce high-speed trains at this point because that's a gap too big to jump for them. But they can start with the so-called like refrigerators, uh, electronics, or shipbuilding industries because many industries they also have low end and high end. You can start with the low end. You still need the industrial policy and you need, you need a stable government. If their government changes every four years, and that's going to make uh, that uh, hopeless. So that's why I think democracy, if that's introduced too early to a developing country, that's a big problem for them. Latin American countries had very good textile production sector. They need a huge market to absorb the mass-produced textile goods. But the market is not naturally formed. Like, uh, like what the new liberal e economic theory uh, argued. Because the market itself is a public goods, which need to be created. It's not a giving from God. It's created by state, state uh, violence. It's created by state capacity. Democracy, you destroy your nation's state capacity. Because if every four years you have to, the main folks or any politician, their energy has to spend on election or re-election, then they could not have the chance to form a consistent long-term plan for their development. 
and every government come up with different ideas. So therefore, I think by spreading democracy across developing uh, nations is another reason we still have so many poor countries not able to develop and industrialize today, even though they had earned all um, their independence, but uh, still they are not able to industrialize because of lack of such a consistent political environment for the government to design and execute industrial policies to nurture their domestic market.